Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. It is Milan Fashion Week, Spring Summer 2024, and we're going to watch together the Gucci Spring Summer 2024 runway show. We will review it together. It is uh, Sabato de Sarno's debut collection, all on his own. Oh, he has so grown up. Or has he? Well, we'll be the judges of that. Now, the video is taken directly from Gucci's YouTube channel, which means it falls under fair use. I have changed the music, however, to be able to utilize copyright-free music. So let's review the show together. Oh, before we do it, subscribe to my channel, will ya? Uh, thumb up this video, yay! Uh, push the notifications bell next to the subscription bell to be notified every time I post a new video. You can also push the join button to become a member today, gain access to extra perks, and uh, also spend more time together in exclusive content. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob, all spelled together, all spelled together there as well. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, and you're all welcome to join. Hi, code chatters in the chat bar. Are you ready, Ferret? Hit it, Bubbles. Let's watch Sabato de Sarno's debut collection for Gucci 2024 spring summer look at look at those shoelets this model is barely lifting her feet how heavy those shoes are but it's a reinvention oh look at the belt the Gucci belt is back polished this time not aged gold we got silver the Jackie baglet is there and we got the Gucci loafers with a considerable little wedge moment there. Uh, angry models seems to be fashionable since at least a decade now. Who started this trend? It's so annoying. Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of diversity. Good. Good to see uh, at least one black model on the runway. Body shapes, no diversity there yet. Okay, the loafah, we get it. It's a, it's a high loafah. Oh, a little kitten heel. Oh, the Gucci logo is now very Tom Ford-esque. See, it kind of just etched into that leather. Imprinted, embossed into the leather. Minimalist shirt, trying to serve a little bit of Tom Ford here. Mixed in with, oh, elongated silhouettes. The opposite of Tom Ford for Gucci, but also not very much Alessandro Michele either. We got an Asian model, that's good. So now we're showing more skin, bedazzled top. This is, what is this supposed to be? You can't swim with this because stuff like this, you know, you know the tag is going to say you cannot wash this. Okay, dry clean only. So where are you going to wear this? To the swimming pool? I don't think so. It's more like an editorial look, I suppose. A little safari vibes with the old school Gucci uh, logo. Okay, so we are having logos. They're a little bit, a little bit more toned down than what Alessandro Michele used to do. This shirt is screaming Vivian Westwood. I actually have this shirt, the, the pirate shirt from the '80s. Sabato de Sarno. Ti stiamo guardando, tesoro, eh? Sappiamo voi sta facendo. Okay, then we got a little nude look, a little callback to Skims, <laughs> callback to, to Kim Kardashian. You perchance want her to wear a little Balenciaga moment with the hoodie. Okay, love the shoe with the leather skirt. That's kind of cute. Contrasting that to the zipper. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get what he's trying to do, but no, this, this is not the time in this economy to play poverty when you got the money to afford a leather Gucci skirt, but then you want to like dress down with the zip, zipped up little, you know, sporty vibe. Like, I don't care, like, if I just spent like $20,000 on this. No, this is not the time to play those games. Sabato de Sarno. No. You know what I mean? You're either going to go all out and be like a rich snob, or you're going to dress for less and you're going to call it a day. Just saying. Now, this is giving me Y2K vibes. Yeah, the Gucci logo on the little strap. Dolce Gabbana did it, did it better. You know, zip that out. Okay. Yeah, pea green coat, cute. You know those fringes are gonna get attached to everything. You're gonna stick, like white on rice, as Blanche Devereaux would say. You're just gonna stick to whatever you sit on. You'll never be able to, to stand up again if you wear that coat. Mark my words. 
Either you're gonna lose a fringe, you're gonna lose a coat, or you're gonna lose a hip because you're gonna fall down because the thing is gonna stick to either another person or go other garments or furniture. It's a cute little warm sweater. You know, you can get a cause, you know, cause, cause vibes. Cause, cause. See what I did there? Uh, little Jackie baglets and uh, exotics. This is a really beautiful blue, the skirt. Combined with the navy blue. I love this combination of three hues of blue. Oh, this is beautiful. Uh, not because of the shapes necessarily. I just love combination of different blues all in one. Particularly interesting in my book. Okay. Mauve pinky vibes with navy blue. Also a vibe. I love the color combo. Yeah, the color guts to go. The color guts to go. Like, what are we supposed? Okay, so this is Sabato's. Like, hey, girl. Like, this is me. This is my style. Let me tell you where it's at. Where's it at, Sabato? Can we like? God, I, I already see people falling in these shoes. You know they're gonna break an ankle sooner or later. Like, I understand here the proportion game. Like. We got the oversized shirts like, hey, I just like, you know, sexy, you know, let's remember Tom Ford vibes, like my, I just, I'm wearing my, although Tom Ford did the, you know, I'm taking business into my own hands, woman type of power, power woman vibe. Uh, this is more like a woman wearing her boyfriend's shirt after the boyfriend has had his ways with her. So in a way it's kind of, what is this woman reclaiming? Sure, she has really tiny, tiny shorts, short skirts. Okay, so she's reclaiming her twiggy moment. Like, we've been there, done that already with the mini skirts. You know what I mean? Like, you're not reclaiming anything with a mini skirt nowadays. It's already been claimed several times. Are you claiming something particular by wearing snake jackets? Also not. Yes, they're the iconic Gucci colors. It's their symbol, you know, the green, the red, the white. Okay, I get it, but like... Vinyl, patent leather, exotics. This is for a rich client. In today's climate and economy, very few people will be able to afford this, especially these embroidered pieces, where again, you're supposed to look super leger. Look at this, like, like, leger. This is reminiscent of Alessandro Michele, okay? The bedazzled stones around the, the bag and the, and, and the top, like making it like heavy, baroque, there's a hint of Michele, and this also. You know, it's kind of like taking from Alessandro Michele as well. I see what I see what Sabato is doing here. He probably got briefed by the owners, right? To be like, hey, make it sellable. We want this stuff to be wearable. But give a little bit of something to the fans of Alessandro Michele so that they're not disappointed. And give a little bit of hope to the ones who are hoping for a return of Tom Ford one day. Poor Sabato di Sarno. If you think about it truly, he's like the artistic director of Gucci, but I don't feel like he was really free to do what he wanted. You know what I mean? I feel this is very restrained. And I feel it's very restrained for a reason. It's because the economy sucks and they want to sell and they want to be sure that they're going to sell. So they're playing it very safe. So this poor guy sold his soul to the devil basically. And he said, yeah, sure, I'll be your puppet. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll play it safe. I'll sprinkle in a little bit of these editorial looks. You know what I mean? Like, I actually really love the negligee underneath. Combined with the coat. We've seen this a thousand times, you guys. The sexy, you know, scoundrel type. Like, yeah, I have nothing underneath, but then I have this oversized coat, and when I open it, like, oh, look at me. It's been done. Like, I prefer it like this. Be honest about it, take the coat off, and just show me this little negligee type of style dress. This I prefer much more than to try to play those games cosplay, you know, sexy cosplay with the coat on top. Been there, done that, honey. This is very much Gianni Versace 1996, 1997. Yeah, girl, we've, we've been done there with the oversized jackets. Like, let it go. Zubana, Zubana. I can't with these sneakers anymore. I, I can't with luxury brands doing these poverty style sneakers that like, we, you know, like, you're gonna make these sneakers cost $800, $900. Then give me something more than a Nike sneaker would give. Because quite frankly, Nike sneakers give more than this and cost way less. So I'm just so done with it. 
the fluffy furry shoes. We've seen this as well, like literally a season or two ago. We've seen it everywhere. We, we've seen the furry version done by Virgil Abloh, then we've seen it again done by Loewe. Did we... Where, where else did we see this? Then we see it in Burberry as well? I don't know. We've seen it in a ton of places. Come on. But they're playing it safe. You see a lot of these pieces as singles, individual pieces, very wearable. You see what I mean? Like just the coat, just the, just the mini dress, just the shorts, just the other shirt. Not in combination as they've styled it here. I think it's the styling that sucks. The styling makes this collection age terribly. Terribly. This collection looks like it's a Y2K... Wanting to... Like a Y2K that's not Y2K yet because it still has residue from the 90s. So it's not really in the future, but it's still attached to the past in a wrong way. The styling sucks. I would have styled this collection much differently and I would have not played with all of these like negligees underneath boyfriend's coat on top. And I would have, you know, not only had skinny models on the runway, where's, where's the diversity here? Mm. But I see the logic behind this. I do believe that they just wanted to sell. And I think Sabato was given... Okay. Yeah, that... Um, I think they just want to sell. And I think that they kind of put him under the bus because this is not memorable. Nobody's going to remember this collection as like the Gucci collection. Like Sabato began his journey at Gucci with this. But it's the times we're living in. It's the times we're living in. It's like these brands want to sell. They don't want to play theater. They don't want to give almost no room for wiggle creativity that might not sell, but is a good visual moment. They're literally thinking about what's going to sell once it's hanging in the store. They're not, they're not really relying that much on social media, you know, selfies and photography anymore. They want this to work on a few red carpets and they want this to work in your wardrobe. You, normal person who does not have an existence in acting, you know, red carpet events, film festivals, you know, you're not living that life, okay? But you still have to wear these pieces. So this has made... Gucci way more wearable. You know, those boring pieces that are comfortable, they're a little bit timeless in a way because you, you can wear those shirts even 10 years from now if you can fit in them after 10 years have passed. Um, and that's that. It's very cause, you know, very cause. Oh, there you go, Cecilia Brown. Very cause meets Prada meets Versace. <laughs> oh, man. I think I liked his outfit best, says Julie Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Sabato's own outfit. Um, Stefan Domonko says, summary in a single word, forgettable. Apricot says, this collection was not bad, not great either. Odd Pink Grace says, channeling Tom Ford. I loved Tom with the velvet, silk, low rise. I do love the leather monogram skirt. No plus sizes. They are not playing. Oh, Jack's Bag Attack says, I like the one blue Jackie bag and the blue outfit. I love the juxtaposition of the different blues together. Melissa says, let's be honest, fashion is not inclusive. Like Chanel with the token model, it's a travesty. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know either way your thoughts down below. What do you think? Was this a yay or a nay? Did Sabato pass the test? You know, missing the theater of it all, says Tyler. The collection was like Prada does, does Atlantic City. Minus the the glitz and the glamour, except for a couple of those little bedazzled bits that are, you know, you know they're going to attach themselves to the chair when you sit down. And, you're, and either you're going to lose a crystal or you're going to lose the dress. Honey, let's be real here. Let's be real here. And all of these brands are not the best at making those holders for all those jewels. When it comes to costume jewelry... A zonzouet, a zonzouet. I wouldn't trust them. Everything I said in this video was for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything was alleged and just my opinion. Thumb up the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. I got more reviews coming up. And never give up on love. Bye, fashion peeps.